At over 14,000 feet, Mount Elbert is the highest peak in Colorado and the second highest summit in the entire US outside of Alaska. This year, I decided to take a road trip to go hike it and thought, why not also hike the highest peaks of some other states along the way? Guadalupe Peak in Texas, Wheeler Peak in New Mexico, then Mount Elbert, and finally Black Mesa in Oklahoma. Each one would offer unique hiking challenges in terms of elevation, terrain, and climate. I didn't want to go alone, so I invited my brother Austin to join me. After weeks of planning and preparation, we packed our gear into the Jeep and hit the road. This is the story of our road trip hiking adventure, Four Peaks. We spent the first day driving all the way to the Guadalupe Mountains, home to the highest peak in Texas. We're quickly figuring out that this is not ideal, but really tired. After spending the night sleeping squished together in the car, we went for a warm-up hike to get ready for the first peak. Found a little vantage point. How are you feeling, Austin? Good. Think we're gonna make it tomorrow? Yeah. All right, cool. We started hiking the next morning as early as possible so that we could watch the sunrise. And it's about four o'clock in the morning. We've already hiked up maybe half a mile. Yeah, we got about two hours until sunrise. Was it a good decision so far or bad? Good. Just made it to the top of Guadalupe Peak. Been hiking for like four hours, I think. How's it feel to be at the highest point in Texas? Got the sun behind us. This was actually my second time on Guad Peak. So I went for the extra challenge of hiking down to the nearby iconic peak, El Capitan. Came from all the way up there, that's Quad Peak, I think. But man, it's hard because there's no marked trail. And it really take, takes it out of you, at least for me right now. The sun's beating down on me. I can see the top, I think it's doable. I'm gonna keep going. The views from here are just incredible. It's kind of nerve wracking because I'm close to some steep, drop-offs. <laughs> Made it to the top of El Capitan and pretty amazing. Almost 360 views. Definitely on three sides view. It's a long way down. Time to head back. So today we are having a little chill day. Uh, finished organizing the car because it was a mess. And yeah, we're chilling at the park. And then the plan is to go to Carlsbad Caverns, even though we're super tired, our feet are killing us. More than 700 feet below the surface, the cool and humid cavern air 
was a very welcome change from the blistering heat we experienced the previous day. Spent the night in the National Forest. Been pretty good days, nice day. Yeah, we're getting up there in terms of the cold weather. Compared to 90 degree highs at least. So today we're gonna pack up and go to White Sands. Hey, you, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just gonna sleep here tonight. You're just gonna sleep there? Yeah. It's too sandy. <laughs> oh, there's a toe in the sand. I'm stuck. Need some help? No, I'm good. <laughs> Ready to go, Mr. Sandman? Yeah. Now we're on our way. Towards the second peak, Wheeler Peak, <clears throat> driving up north through New Mexico. Got the river behind us. It's pretty nice. Just cooking up some soup. I'm gonna have a nice chill night, no bugs. Should be able to get a pretty good sleep. Leaving Carson National Forest, trying to figure out when we're gonna actually attempt Wheeler Peak, depending on the weather. But yeah, it's a really nice view. This doesn't feel like New Mexico, it feels more like Colorado right here. It's uh, five o'clock in the morning, just below Towski Valley. And we're gonna try this. Got the snowshoes on. You can see how deep the snow goes. So you really do need these right now. Can't even see the peak from here. Got about four miles. Make a progress. Would not be able to do it without these snowshoes. About an hour and a half in, almost at two miles. And you can see, basically in winter wonderland over here. How are you feeling? Good. We're at 12,040 feet, just above 12,000 feet. Pretty high elevations, really snowy. So we're about 0.3 miles from the top. It was getting super difficult. Ah, we're losing our window of return here. Trying to rest our legs. We're so close. We were seriously considering giving up at this point and turning around because we were worried about getting caught in the afternoon rain. But after pushing past some incredibly demoralizing and exhausting sections of the trail, we made a breakthrough and reached the final stretch. Man, that was crazy. We're basically in a fog. We can't see anything around us. Can't see a view or anything. There's the Wheeler Peak sign. Make it official. We made it. It's just before noon. That's two high points down. Highest point in New Mexico. Let's go. To celebrate our accomplishment and recover, we booked a hotel for the night. I had really underestimated the sun's reflection on the snow and ended up with a bad sunburn on my face, one of the worst I've ever had. For this reason, we ended up staying two nights in the hotel before heading towards Colorado. We 
took a little detour to spend some time at Great Sands National Park, doing one last warm-up hike before Mount Elbert. Hiked up to the uh, Dunes Overlook Trail. That's a really nice view. Wheeler Peak had taken a toll in Austin, and he decided not to do Elbert with me. Knowing that I would have to summit the most difficult peak of the trip alone, I made sure to get an early start the next morning. Just some snowy patches so far, about two miles in, and <clears throat> feeling pretty good. But yeah, I think I got like two and a half miles left. Okay, so I made it through a couple of snowy sections. Sun's coming up. Over yonder, that's Mount Albert. You can see Twin Lakes now. It's looking awesome. Once making it above 13,000 feet, the steep incline of the trail and effects of high elevation were wearing me down. I had to take frequent breaks, which slowed my progress to a crawl. By taking the lessons I learned from Wheeler Peak, I continued to push past what felt impossible into one of the highest and most breathtaking places I've ever been in my entire life. Oh, finally made it to the top. But yeah, that was crazy. That's what I'm talking about. Woo! Definitely worth it. 100%. Worth it, man. Insane. With the main goal of summoning Elbert complete, it was smooth sailing from here as we drove to Oklahoma for the final peak. And of course, we did a little spontaneous exploring along the way. Getting close to the top of Black Mesa and up the trail. It's pretty steep right here. Up until now, it's been pretty flat. We're just already all exhausted from all the hiking and climbing we've done previous to this. With the four peaks complete, it was time to head home, but not before making one final stop at the Grand Canyon of Texas, Palo Duro Canyon. Since all the trails are closed, we're making our own trails. Found a 
mysterious cave. Anthony's inside. Anthony, where'd you go? Okay, I'm going in. Oh, what the? Dang, this is tight. Hey. What's up, man? Where'd you go? Found another opening. Up there. That was crazy. <laughs> what I learned from this trip is that things worth doing in life are like mountains. When you arrive at the bottom and look up, getting to the top seems impossible. It may feel overwhelming at first, but you just have to start. From then on, it's an uphill battle, but you have to keep going. You'll inevitably face one obstacle after another that challenge you in different ways. Although it may be uncomfortable, if you persevere through those moments where you really want to quit and turn around, you will eventually reach the top, achieving far more than you thought possible. So don't ever hesitate to take on new challenges and push the boundaries of your comfort zone because the view from the peak is always worth it. So keep pushing yourself always onwards. Mountain boy, mountain boy, climb, climb, climb to the top. Yeah.